Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can utilize various features of the Edit Motion Layer tool in addition to transition curve editing to generate a jogging animation via the rotoscoping animation technique. Rotoscoping is a traditional technique mainly used in 2D animation where the animator will trace over real life footage to generate an animation sequence. This can also be used to generate 3D animations, which is what we're dealing with here. To start off, we need to import our real life footage into our scene. There are a couple of ways to do this. You can right click and drag your raw video file into the scene and import it as either a billboard or a prop. A billboard will always be facing the camera, while a prop will import in as a video plane that you can orbit around. However, in this case I've already created and positioned a plane in my scene, and I'll drag the video directly onto that object. I've also positioned a camera at a 90 degree angle from the plane, and my character is also rotated exactly 90 degrees from that plane. These angles are important for the accuracy of your animation, so be sure that they are correct. From there, let's ensure our character is selected and open up the Edit Motion Layer tool with the N hotkey. I've already scaled and positioned everything here to ensure that our character is the same size as the reference jogger in the video, so you may need to do this first to ensure consistency. What we want to do first is match our character's pose to that of the jogger on the video at frame 1. If there are no constraints enabled, moving the hip bone will move your entire character. I can then drag the ankle bones into position, and thanks to inverse kinematics, or IK, the calf and thigh bones will position themselves accurately. FK or forward kinematics is also available, which you can learn more about in the dedicated tutorial. I'll position all of the body parts to match, being sure to click and drag on the palm of the hand dummy to close all of the fingers slightly. For the limb that is occluded from our camera perspective, you can switch to the preview camera and use a slightly different angle. We can then extend the duration of our clip in the timeline by clicking and dragging the edge. I'll then move ahead on the timeline to frame 18 and make more adjustments to my pose to match the reference jogger. There is no consistent rule for which frame you should go to for your first pose edit as some animations have a different pace and movements may not be consistent like a metronome. A jogger's gait can often be inconsistent, so this process may take some trial and error to determine the ideal timeline positions for your edits. I'll then move on to frame 53 and do further edits to our second position. Be cognizant of the smaller details as well, such as the bending of the toes. In this case, I also want to rotate the upper body slightly via the upper torso and or neck bones as nobody will jog with a completely non-rotated upper body unless they're a robot. The upper torso or neck are used because when they are rotated, they will affect all of the child bones from the shoulders down to the hands. I'll continue to do some tweaking at frame 74. And again at frame 96. The keyframe edits are relatively evenly spaced, and when I play back, you'll see that we start with our character's left leg straight in front, and end with the character's right leg straight in front. Now you can do the rest manually, but what we're going to do here is use a shortcut and copy paste these keyframes to create a perfect loop. So let's get rid of our video now, and select all of the keys in the motion layer main track, and paste them roughly an even number of frames past the last one. You can always adjust these for timing later. However, they're just a repeat of the first four keyframes, so what we need to do is select each one and proceed to click on the mirror button in the Edit Motion Layer tool. Now we have a basic but crude running loop where the first keyframe edit is an exact replica of the last one. You may find that even though you replicated a few frames of the reference video, that the timing of the jog will still be off. For exact timing, you need to replicate nearly every keyframe in the entire run, but we can cheat here a bit by using transition curves in the timeline. For a quick and dirty example, I'll open the body part subtracts under the motion layer track and right click on every other keyframe for the torso and apply an alternating ease in and ease out transition. The end result of this will be an upper body that has a bit more of a natural and less robotic swaying. You can also edit other body parts using different transition curve presets. Again, it's a bit of trial and error here as each motion will be different, 
so experiment with different transition curves on different body parts at different frames. You can also use the Curve Editor for more comprehensive editing control. For more advanced editing on your individual body part keyframes, you can enable bone tracks from the main motion track. This will allow you to go down all the way to the individual bones in each body part and edit them individually. Generally what you want to do with a motion like this is position the child bones progressively further down the timeline so that it replicates the natural movement of the shoulder driving the movement of the upper arm down to the forearm and hand. Once that's done, you can play back to see the results. It's not bad for something we whipped up from scratch in a few minutes. There are a lot of additional tweaks you can make if you have more time, and to learn about how, check out our animation tutorials from our Reillusion Courses page. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.